Nairobi City County in the in the in the in the in the, in the IBC code is the county number 47. And uh, we have come and we have called you here because we think that things are not going right in the county. We think that since we got elected in August 2022 and we got sworn in in September 2022, things have not been right. And we thought that we could work with this governor we have now, but we think that the governor is not competent enough. He doesn't understand how to run a county the size of Nairobi, considering that by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics own report, Nairobi is bigger than 27 bottom counties combined. So today, Nairobi does not have proper structures, governance structures to run a county or the city the size of Nairobi, being the capital city of the country. Uh, we don't have a substantive county secretary. The chief officers, most of them are clueless because they are getting orders from uh, what the employees, where the employees call Shakahola, which is Riverside uh, Drive. The governor is rarely in City Hall. When he comes there, it's either to meet an ambassador or a dignitary who is passing by or so on. But the county is not being run as it should be professionally. With the employees nearing 15,000, we think that the county is degenerating into something which is going to hinder development in the country. Today, as we sit here, we don't know who is collecting revenue in Nairobi. I've just spoken to the leadership of Nairobi Revenue Authority. They don't know who is managing the revenue of the country, uh, of the county. They think, they, they are being told that the revenue is being collected by Safaricom. We don't know how Safaricom as a private company came to have the system of revenue collection. We don't know on which contractual basis they are collecting the revenue for the county. We don't know who audited the system to know how many bank accounts are connected to that system. We believe that Nairobi is degenerating at a very fast rate, that if it is not rescued, then things are not going to look good. And it's getting worse year in, year out. I'm just getting a revenue report, which I'll be sharing with the, a good number of you, is that, uh, with, with all of you, is that last year, by this period, in, in the first few days of, uh, of, of, of November, we had collected more than 100 million uh, shillings. Uh, though we th still thought that that was very low because Nairobi should be collecting more than 200 million shillings a day. So 100 million shillings in six or five days, if you may, translates to an average of 20 million last year. Today, up to today, they have collected, uh, up to yesterday, they have collected 12 million shillings. It tells you that something is really not right. Counties like Kajiado, Machakos, Wasingishu are collecting more money than Nairobi. Nairobi with more potential, a bigger metropolis, you know, more revenue capacity is collecting less revenue because this revenue is being pilfered as source by few individuals in the executive and the county assembly. When the, 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 the theft has been done at the executive level, then few individuals at the county assemblies are paid to look away because they hold the, the mantle of leadership. And we believe that if things are not corrected in Nairobi, if the president and, 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 and Right Honorable Raila Odinga do not stamp their foot in Nairobi, then things are going to get worse the president is going to be constantly blamed for, 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 for bad, poor governance because he has allowed Nairobi to be managed and to be run by somebody who had no professional credence to run Nairobi. Somebody who previously, before getting into politics, had not held a job higher than cyber cafe attendant. We believe that the governor we have today is the wrong person to manage Nairobi. Issues are emerging, a lot of issues, until sometimes we are overwhelmed, we say, what do we cover? If you go to health sector, now the governor has brought up an idea of bringing private pharmacies inside hospitals, county hospitals. How do you bring private pharmacies inside public facilities? What arrangements, what governance structures, how will they be oversighted? How will you ensure that the poor people don't pay, you know, two exorbitant fees for prescriptions. How will you ensure that uh, 
drugs are not stolen from the public uh, systems and brought and sold into private pharmacies, which are now being hosted, uh, housed in, inside the facilities owned by the public. It is very wrong. The CEOs of those hospitals have been brought into a job group called Job Group S. They are the same level as chief officers. What governance structures will you have there? How will they be supervised? How do you expect a, a, a CEO and chief officer to have the same job group? So who will be managing, who will be supervising who? Why can't we have a clarity on the structures, you know, remuneration structures in the county? Why don't we properly ensure that these things are properly managed and, and, and things are aligned so that we don't have uh, the poor way of managing things? When you hear, you know, I'm, I'm just giving you a ev general overview, because when you hear that pieces of land is being given out to individuals to go and borrow loan, the issue of Jivanji, yeah? Jivanji approached the county uh, because they were doing the affordable housing in, 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 in Ngara. And this affordable housing, the developer was supposed to bring the money. The county was supposed to give out the land. Today, the developer didn't bring enough money. The county gave out land. The county went and borrowed money for the developer, 1.9 billion, using the county's assets as a security. The developer today, instead of finishing that house, that the, the, the affordable housing, yeah, is building a mall in Kileleshua, and he's saying that he doesn't have money. And we hear that some of the county officials are shareholders in that mall. Why is the developer building a mall in Kileleshua if he is supposed to finish affordable housing? Why is the developer and why is the speaker being told not to allow debate on that? We have to ask these uh, tough questions. You know, these all affordable housing have been subscribed, oversubscribed. They were bought off plan. It means the developer has his money. He has the money from the, uh, the, the bank loan he borrowed with the asset of the county. But the developer now also has money from citizens who have bought houses but are looking at a situation where they might never get to own those houses because the developer is facing a situation where he will never, uh, will never be able to complete the houses, which are only 30% uh, comple uh, completion level. We think that things with Governor Sakaja are not looking good. And if they are allowed to degenerate further, the citizen of this county will continue to complain of poor services, will continue to complain that the national government is not looking at, after them, while the, start, the problem starts with the county here. And I say it starts with the county because the, 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 the number of people employed in Kenya is 18.6, let's say 18 million. Out of these 18 million, only 3 million people are in formal employment. The informal sector in this country is majorly in Nairobi. The welders, the carpenters, the mechanics, they are in Nairobi. But there are people who have never been given dignity by being organized and being registered and recognized by the county government. We have not put up structures. We have proposed structures. You ensure that you can identify every Juakali operator here, give them dignity in wherever they want to apply their trade, ensure that they are registered. You give them a number, you give them a county number, ensure that you can bring them into a platform where they can access financial services, government services, insurance services, and so on. But the county, because we have somebody who doesn't have the brains to manage the county the size of Nairobi, we feel that it is not personal against Sakaja. We have, given, we have listened to him several, several times. We thought that maybe the issue of Tim's University was just a blip. But we think that the, the, the fact that the governor was a politician for so long, but just thought of going to Tim's University to get a university degree, was evidence of what we were facing as a county. Something is serious, seriously wrong with this county, and we believe that it has to stop at some point. And it has a lot of issues which are happening around the county which are not going right. And now people are just, you know, cutting deals, uh, you know, cutting corners, uh, suppliers are not being paid, employees are uh, very demotivated from both the county assembly and the executive. People don't have the eagerness to do work. Even the people who are employed, they're employed but with no salary. You do. Why do you recruit so many more people while you know that you are struggling to even, you know, uh, pay the ones you have? So these are some of the, the, the issues which we wanted to engage you on. 
because as stakeholders and as the first, fourth estate, at the voice of the citizens in Nairobi, I believe that we need to engage and properly call this, some of these things out. And we'll be sharing with you some of the documentations. You know, we have seen around this, the governor himself. Now, if you go to, uh, I don't know if the citizen uh, royal media is here. If you go to, when you're just branching out off Jenny Spirit, when you're branching off to, 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 to Citizen TV, there's a petrol station there. That petrol station is owned by the governor. Where did he get the money to own that petrol station? I, I'll give you documents showing the governor is buying property cash, 940 million, 58 million, 49 million. Where is he giving all this money? Where is he giving all this money while well, the employees are going out without salaries? Something is seriously wrong in this city, and we have to call it out. So is, if the president is interested, he should ensure we stop the anarchy we are degenerating into. The leadership of the, of the assembly is not helping, and now we have to come out because they have, they have made the environment of the assembly to very, uh, not, not very conducive to allow free and open debate. I think we'll have to open other platforms to ensure that we hold the governor accountable and the leadership and the executive to deliver the mandate and to ensure that services are delivered to the people of Nairobi uh, as Antony. So I'll, I'll allow my, my colleague... After the 2022 general elections, that is after August, the county government of Nairobi promised um, Nairobi residents so many things which included good roads, dignified affordable housing, street lighting, improved health care, and all those things put together. However, we are on the third year now, and uh, we have not seen any sign whatsoever of implementing all these things that we promised, especially in the governor's manifesto. Some of the issues that we are raising, and we have always raised, is the issue of a disorganized city, especially in the CBD. If you look at the, most of the major roads within the city, they are used for trade. However, the owners of some of these shops cannot even trade because the county government of Nairobi has not been able to implement what they promised as the solution to hawking within the city. We have tried our best. If you look at the, most of the questions on the floor of that house, most of them emanates from asking the county government to look at the issue of hawkers. You even saw before the impeachment of the deputy president, there was um, a lot of issues pertaining to hawking within the city. The second issue definitely is the issue of lad grabbing. Out of 100 statements that come on the floor of that house, the most popular statement is on the issue of lad grabbing. We have been looking at the issue of Jivanji, um, which my colleague has already addressed. I personally sit in the planning committee. And some of the preliminary reports that, come, that has come before that committee is that Jabavu, a company that uh, was allowed and was given a contract, to deal with the housing program uh, within the Jivanji estate to, has already taken an advance of half a billion shillings at the National Bank of Kenya, which documents were also presented yesterday when the NBK appeared before the committee. However, if you look at the addendum uh, that was signed uh, by the then county secretary, it shows that there were amendments that were done on that document. The court ruling of 2023 on the issue of Pagani affordable housing informed the county government that you cannot use a title deed that belongs to the public to charge it as a collateral. The county government has already done that. The Jabavu has already taken a loan of 1.9 billion. The documents are showing they have definitely taken that advance of half a billion and we have been asking very hard questions and what we are saying with my colleague is that some of the major issues that we are raising before that house they don't have anybody to give answers to when the executive appear before any committee in that assembly they do not have even answers to some of these questions we are asking 
So we are here to ask both His Excellency the President and the Prime Minister Honorable Raira Odinga that things are getting out of hand in Nairobi. And if there is no solution to these problems, the taxpayers' money will always be used and there will never be a solution to these problems. The governor of Nairobi understands very clearly that the issue of um, transport system in Nairobi has not been sorted. All the, all the things that he indicated and put in that manifesto has not been implemented. Why do we have to keep on reminding him on the things that he promised Nairobians that he would do, yet he's not doing? MCAs are doing their job, including passing both the supplementary budget and the substantive budget. Yet the things that they pass within that budget are always not implemented. So our cry is uh, both to the leadership of 